Okay, let's uh, call the meeting to order and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're all together. I was actually going to go out of step there for a second. <laughs> you can't, just for kicks and giggles, but you could. <laughs> for those that are watching, this was uh, this yeah. is our first live meeting again. That's how I do it. Uh, uh, I do it every since day. COVID went on, but uh, we're set. So we're, okay. It was the reason but we're clapping is because it's hard to do the Pledge of Allegiance together, um, as everybody probably knows when we're doing our uh, Zoom meeting. So um, right now it is on Zoom. Um, it's going to be diff more difficult. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out uh, because uh, we're filming it from another iPad. So when I hopefully when I save the recording, it'll be a view of the board members. And uh, if you guys kind of concentrate on the image that shows the board members, then you'll be able to see maybe see who's talking. You won't be able to tell only three of us. Two of us are without mass. Um, so it'll be a guessing game, but uh, hopefully the audio will be good enough. Uh, we have one microphone, so everybody that's here needs to make sure they speak loud enough. Um, that's the microphone. Mr. Right, Supervisor, so, um, you have a, I don't know if it matters though, there's a white box on here. Yeah. But I, don't think, I, can't, I can't read that far away, so I'm not sure what it says. What's it say there, Kim? You want to be recorded. All right. All right. Hey, it was better with the white box. The mask on that guy. Um, all right. So the next thing is uh, roll call, please. All right. Looks like all board members are present and accounted for in Highland. <laughs> and for um, purposes of that, we are on Zoom, even though it's no longer a legal issue um everybody here is is in highland that's on the zoom meeting uh, that's on the board so um, next item is uh, can i get a motion to approve the agenda motion to approve the agenda salvia support can you move and support it vote please all right you guys are going to have to be patient with me today because i don't have my little cheat sheet to show me about voting so we're gonna do round robin. We'll start with <laughs> Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Yes. Yes. Mr. Hamill. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, next item is a consent agenda approval. Uh, Jennifer Frederick has indicated there's an issue with an item that she'd like to correct. And uh, I have it up on the screen here in the background. I, of course, um, I'm not going to be able to do screen sharing right now um, because that's going to create some issues. So when we did list the bills, we took the sheriff station out of 401, which is capital. It's But it's labeled township building construction, $123,070.88. It'll be coming out of the sheriff's the police fund so we'll make that correction we're going to start taking all of the building <laughs> costs out of the for the township building out of the police fund that worked matt said it was okay so <laughs> <laughs> not true <laughs> i would move to approve the consent agenda with correction support okay move to support it uh, vote please mrs lewis yes Yes. 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 Well, <clears throat> just a check, uh, Justin. Can you hear everybody? Okay. Yes. Yes, I can. All right. Good. Just want to make sure. All right. The next item is announcements. Uh, Township offices will be closed January seventeenth, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And the next item is, um, I guess, a new probationary firefighters chief. You want to uh, do anything with that? Part of it? Nope, just uh, read an addition for the young board. You know, I'm the board. Okay. That 
sheet there. Do you want to name them? Do you have their sure. Probationary firefighter Mackenzie Chapel, probationary firefighter Justin Bearden. Um, both come to us with prior experience. Uh, Ms. Chapel's from Milford. Mr. Bearden was an explorer with Waterford. All right. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Right there. Okay. All right. Oh, right there. Sorry. There's a whole bunch of people there. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for uh, joining the uh, team here. You get to come into the new station. That's a maybe we should have you come into the old station and put you a little through a little bit of work, and then you'd be glad. Really to appreciate it. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much. All right, the uh, next item um, presentation swearing in of uh, some firefighters. All right, read real quick, and I'll have each one call here. Where do you want them to stay? Why don't you stand if you if you look at that iPad there? It's filming this way. Okay. So stand right in the middle. Well, I don't want to be in the picture. It's just for that. So I'll, I'll, stand. Stand. I'll, I'll, I'll go stand over there, and they can stand. Here. Okay, there sounds you go. good. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to announce that we have three members of our department who will progress from probationary firefighter status to the rank of firefighter. Firefighter Tyler Martin, badge 224. Firefighter Emilio Fisher, badge 225. Firefighter Caleb Moreno, badge 227. On average, it takes roughly 12 to 18 months to achieve the required certification of Michigan Firefighter 1 and 2, Emergency Medical Technician B, logging hours of vehicle operation, and HTSP operations and competency testing. <clears throat> Put this into perspective. Each candidate must complete approximately 700 hours of training and testing for firefighter certifications and EMT uh, certifications, as well as our department staff. Maintain a minimum response of 15% of emergency calls. Last year, we ran a little over 1,750 runs, all while juggling their careers and families. <clears throat> um, I'm going to call all three of them up here. As I call them up here, um, we'll put them in the center, and they'll announce whoever's here with them. Uh, unfortunately, Tyler Martin <laughs> is on, he's on duty today, so he's on a transport right now, Aww. so he's not able to be with us, but as soon as he comes back, uh, we're we'll not sure, <laughs> if you'll allow me, I'd like to bring him in and sure. have him sworn in. Sure. So Tyler's not here. Amelia Fisher, come on up. You said your mom is not here? No. Caleb Moreno, you can go ahead and announce who's here with you. Uh, I'm a grandma. And call them. Okay. Put her stand right in the center. You can be on uh, this TV. Okay, pull, come back this way. Stay right in the middle. Okay, this way a little bit more. That's good right there. All right. Well, finish right here. Right here. I do solemnly swear or affirm. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. A firefighter in and for the Township of Highland. A firefighter in and for the Township of Highland. County of Oakland and State of Michigan. County of Oakland and State of Michigan. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. All right. Congratulations. All right. Here we go. Uh, now that they're coming off probation, they go from the old style helmet, which is a, a fiberglass helmet, to a traditional helmet, which is also fiberglass, <laughs> but they look like everybody else. Uh, we put them in a regular helmet before, so we know that they're not. Uh, trained to the, the approach to the level we need them to be trained to to do any task on a fire scene or on the EMS scene. But now that they've completed all their tasks, they get the helmet and they have they don't have to stand out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Caleb, congratulations. Welcome. Right. 
Thanks, guys. Congratulations. All right, next item is public comment. Um, anybody have any public comment? Yes, uh, Bill Anderson here of on Saddle Ridge. Um, when I was uh, dropping my wife off at the activity center here about no week ago, I noticed that the snow removal was only partially complete. Uh, the uh, and there's there's some of these these elderly ladies that they have to to negotiate the parking lot with walkers, and there was at least between two and three inches of heavy slush uh, in the aisleway. Whereas where the cars were parked, yeah, the snow was removed, but there was a, there was a quite a uh, significant amount of slush there. And I would perhaps we need to, to pass along to those folks that were either renting that building from, or if we're taking care of the snow removal, that it needs to be it watched a little bit more closely because we do have those folks that, that need to uh, to access the facility. All right, we appreciate that. We'll get that uh, taken care of. Any other public comment? Okay, no other public comment, then uh, we'll move on. I'm sorry, I was too slow on my uh, mute unmute. I just wanted to address Bill's statement and the fact of that I have relayed our concerns of snow removal and maintenance to the parking lot to the landlord at the new facility. So I just wanted to make sure he knew that I have addressed it. So that's my story. All right, thanks, Heidi. Stick into it. Okay, the next item is a public hearing, revision of use requirements. That was moved till next meeting. No. Huh? That's moved till the next meeting. The public yeah, hearing. Yeah, she thinks I'm just, you know, have it or read this stuff. Okay, this relates to the cobblestone uh, timber ridge uh, question about um, whether there's uh, going to be a gate or not. That's, we've uh, had a request to move that to uh, February 10th. So that'll be moved. I ask a question about that, I guess, when that sure. start, when that gets to our, that's to our level, of course, and I live in Timber Ridge. So what are my options as a resident and also being on the board? Where's the conflict? I mean, I'm obviously going to speak out because I've been talking to my fellow <clears throat> residents in my neighborhood, but do I, am I allowed to vote on that? If it was, if they were within 300 feet, they would ask to be excused okay. from the board and sit in the audience. So we'll, we'll check on that later. Okay, just curious. Just I, want, I don't want to be obviously be a part of the conversation, but I want to, you know. Well, the interesting part is your opinion is important. an important part of the whole yeah, process. Yeah, I obviously represent, our I represent the whole township, but I also represent our subdivision. Which sub is the board, the, board the board has the, the, we have to, authorize you the, the right to recuse yourself you have to ask the board also can determine that they don't feel it's an issue too I mean, okay so. I just want to put that out there before we get into it so all right thank you and usually it's if there's a monetary gain mm -hmm. yeah no. so sorry squad 51 51 all right it's the old emergency show Johnny Gage, where the soda? All right. Dixon next, call. next item. Um, last month we had on our agenda the introduction for a um, zoning amendment. And uh, this month is the consideration and adoption of the zoning amendment. So I'll start it out with a motion. I'd like to make the motion to it. Adopt the zoning amendment Z024 to rezone parcel 1134 326.002 vacant parcel on South Milford Road, north of Briarwood, 2.16 acres from current zoning of OS, Office Service District, to RM, multiple family residential district, with offer of conditions to restrict development to two single family detached homes. Applicant and property owner 2675 Highland Old Police LLC. So that's all, okay. Now we'll have some discussion on that. Let me find the uh, documentation so people can see what we're talking about here. 
And unfortunately, I, I can't share it with you. And the image is very poor on the uh, um, screen behind me, but uh, hopefully you've uh, got access to the internet while you're sitting there and uh, can bring up the uh, documents that are in the package. So the picture they have on the screen behind me is the parcel that uh, we're talking about. And uh, it was commercial, so uh, this is an opportunity to tie it into the uh, subdivision that's there. Um, that's the Briarwood subdivision. And then if you look in the packet, there's there's quite a bit of, uh, you know, there's a conditional rezoning. Um, so there's a lot of conditions that are added to it. And uh, Mr. Hine was more than willing to accept the uh, terms and conditions, so. I have a question, maybe I missed yeah. it somewhere. And there's always been an issue there with the lighting. I don't know if that's been addressed. There's, it's so dark in that corner and they wanted to remember, I don't remember how, Jen, maybe you were with that. Yeah, so remember I a long time ago we talked about that. I brought that attention that was so expensive to do. Is that gonna be part of, if the two houses get added, would that be something they would? So they're not part of that neighborhood, but they'll have porch lights. Okay, because that corner's always been really dark right there. I just wondered. Yeah, and we had DTE come out. And, right. Um, was, I met with the Homeowners Association. Gosh, yeah. that must have been. It was quite a while ago. It was quite expensive, I remember. Yeah. And the, I just didn't know if that. So, okay. It's just something to think about, too, that maybe the, the obviously lights in the house will definitely help. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Good memory. Okay. Any other questions on that? All right, if there's no questions, then we'll uh, take a vote, please. All right, we'll start with Mrs. Um, Frederick. Yes, I vote yes. Yes. Sylvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Melissa, yes. Hamill, yes. Okay, we don't have to say our name. Well, they're doing yes. it because of the past. Oh. I have a question in the picture. This is just a question. What is right in the middle of the two? Like it halfway, it's like a road line. line. Oh, okay. It's like a road line. I just never noticed it before. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yep. And that sidewalk got put in with that project that say yes. that's the school's project. Nice. All right. So right, thank um, you. If the Hines are watching, <laughs> um, that's been approved. Thank you very much. Uh, next item is the broadband master plan agreement. Um, what we had to do was approve the expenditure um, at a prior meeting, and uh, this is to approve the, the supervisor to sign the uh, agreement to move ahead with the broadband master plan. So uh, I moved to authorize the supervisor to sign the agreement with Entry Point Networks to move forward with the broadband master plan. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Any questions? So I, I'm going to make a public statement uh, relating to that um, because I, <laughs> I got a, an email from uh, a representative from Comcast after seeing that it was on the last month's <laughs> agenda. And uh, there were some documents in there that talked about great programs that they have for yeah. the, uh, those that don't have the resources. And then the other thing I wanted to kind of talk about was the federal government's game plan to give tax credits of $30 to the people that don't have the resources to pay for it. Who can even take a tax credit at a, at a low income level like that? It's like, it borders on stupidity. And so this is part of the rationale behind uh, looking at it from a perspective of being a, um, a utility, not a, you know, a community utility like uh, sewer and water and gas and electric. Uh, there's commissions that control pricing. There don't seem to be any commissions that control pricing on broadband whatsoever. And um, my wife and I were laughing about how um, there's affordable packages. I, they've now got to divide it up into like six different affordable packages. And they're, they're not affordable. They're not affordable. And it's, it's something that uh, we've put ourselves in a position where we've created 
a monster. And then we were taking federal dollars, tax dollars, and pointing them right at these huge corporations and giving them their money, this money. You know, it's like um, <clears throat> allocating money to give to the broadband people to, <clears throat> to try and reduce their costs. It, it just baffles me. So this is the, the one of the key reasons that I think we really have to, if we can do it, to do it. It may just not be, it may be infeasible, may not, but it's something we need to, to research. So uh, be prepared to see some things from Comcast. Um, you know, maybe they'll drop their prices. I, I said seriously. Price. Yeah. That's nauseating, but, I said but um, you know, it's even if we were able to get service to every single home, still not a deal. It's still a, I mean, you add up what your uh, general population is paying to watch. You, know, you give somebody a, a $30 credit, they start out with a special deal at $39.95, now it's $9.95. Within six months, they'll be burning up bandwidth watching every TV show they can possibly watch on YouTube. And now they'll be in the $300 a month range. And, mm -hmm where are we at so that's what that's about you know it's interesting i said before when i first came on the board i was on the, the, the woka meeting or whatever or whatever club group that was with the i think that was woka and well, yeah. you know, nothing's changed it's the same attitude they had when i first got on there when i first came on the, came on the board in 2012 or 2013 it's crazy same is fred coming back too they probably drag him out to come back to us. Uh, what a great he's long gone <laughs> what a great uh thing they are for the community so, Okay, so anyways, anybody else have any, other, any questions on no. it or comments on it? So, right, so I guess we need to. Um, so do we vote on that? No, we haven't voted yet. All right, so I'm up first, so I vote yes. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Louis, yes. Frederick, yes. Hamill, yes. All right, motion carries. Okay. Are we supposed to say our name or not? So, no, I, I don't think so. Okay. It doesn't. <laughs> it's just a fun mark. Well, we're, we're in the Zoom thing and they may not be able to see you. Oh, I guess so. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, budget management for purchase of new parkland. Um, we've gone forward with that. They're, they're now uh, trying to finish up the the uh, closing on the property. What happened is the Robinson family all got sick. <laughs> and um, they actually had a death in their family too, which was, uh, you know, in part of the, yeah. well, I don't know if it was COVID related, but it was one of the uh, husbands. And so that, that was a disaster for the family, but um, they're moving forward with it. So now what we have to do is we have to uh, allocate the, uh, funds for the um, un initial um, payment that's required in the agreement and uh, I would, we just need a motion to approve the uh, okay i would move to approve the budget amendment as presented support how can you move to support it vote please all right we start with mr how mr how votes yes Sylvia, yes cooper yes lewis yes frederick yes Yes. Emily, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to do it. <laughs> I have to think you about it. it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Oh, wow. Well, this is definitely different. This is really strange. It really is funny. Um, I have to say that uh, it's not that I don't like being with people, but the organization of the uh, Zoom meetings and the ability to still have these the, like one on one conversations. It's pretty good. So pretty if this recording works out well, then I think we have a solution to it overall. So those of you that uh, don't want to have to come in can still be interactive. And Bill Anderson, you're the perfect example of how that worked already. So um, appreciate that comment. All right, the next item um, is hire a part-time clerical for the supervisor's office. And as you've heard me tease Jennifer many times, she abandoned me to become my partner at the end of the table. <laughs> and we left Karen running solo, Karen Provo running solo, doing the things that uh, um, Jennifer did as well as what she did. Uh, so um, I wanted to make sure that we got our feet locked into the yep. 
former fire hall, our new mm -hmm. main street, and uh, didn't bring somebody in the mid middle of chaos. So now we're, uh, we've um, <clears throat> done some interviews um, and we found that we, I think will be a really uh, good person to, to fit this bill. Um, and uh, her name is uh, Elaine Kimmel, and I'll, I'll make the motion. So I, I'd like to recommend Elaine Kremel for the open part-time clerical position in the supervisor's office. I'm recommending a start date of January 31st, 2022 at a rate of 16.25 per hour for 25 hours on average, not to exceed 29 hours per week. Support how? Okay. And can we change it from recommend to move? I move, yeah. Okay. Support. All right. All right. So, uh, vote, please. Any questions? No. We had uh, some really good. How many? I mean, it so was. Uh, how many did you have originally? We have. Oh, uh, originally that was stack of them, ago. but when we broke it down to, um, you know, who looked like they could really fit that position, um, we had some really good candidates for it. So it was, uh, and. Um, Elaine is uh, somebody who's uh, a home worker, you know, and uh, we have a head nodding back there because they, they, your wife is part, part of the reason that I, I could uh, feel highly about uh, making a recommendation to. Um, and she just, we just had a really good interview with them and uh, so I think she'll be a good uh, addition and asset to the township. Is Elaine here tonight? No, she's not here. <laughs> Might be on the call. Just one. <laughs> okay, so uh, did we, did we didn't do a vote yet. Ready to vote? Yep, ready to vote. Okay, Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Lewis, yes. Frederick, yes. Yes. Mr. Howe, vote yes. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Yeah. All right. Next item, uh, resolution 22-01, 2022 poverty exemption policy guidelines and determinations. I move to approve resolution 2201, 2022 poverty exemption policy guidelines and determinations. Cooper support, support. go ahead. <laughs> we'll Kathy, we'll 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 gotta be quick. I know. I can't add loud. All right. Any, uh, me. any discussion no, there? Questions about that? <laughs> no. Nope. Just for uh, general public, what these um, guidelines are for is that uh, there are certain people who meet the guidelines for exemption on uh, their property uh, taxes through poverty. And uh, these are the guidelines that are used when we do the analysis to determine whether they're qualified to receive, receive that exemption. All right, the vote, please. All right, let's start with Ms. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Lewis, yes. Frederick, yes. Flowers, yes. Oh. Mr. Howe, yes. Salvia, so, yes. Campbell, yes. <laughs> yes, good work, Pam. Just right. a, a question, I didn't get in the discussion. Um, just on the guidelines, you know, I still have my old guideline book, uh, are there, updated or new guideline books, or are we just staying with the original guideline that you gave me a while back? Not that it's- So the, are you talking about board policy? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the employee guide. That's yeah, this is a different there. policy, but- uh, it, was a, it was a small binder. Oh, uh, yeah. I, just wondered I if mean, we've changed the, board, the personnel policy a couple yeah. times. You know, um, policies are all now on our website. Okay. So if you go under um, board of trustees, Right. Then um, there's a tab for policies. So the question is, I, I don't really need the loose leaf binder to be used. We're we're digital now. Right. Well, <laughs> I just want to make sure. I mean, I yeah, no, that's a good question. Yeah. 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 I, I forgot now. you guys had those. Okay. It's yeah. it's great. So took care of mine. It's great uh, hallway library reading. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have one to the job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I lost track again there. 11C. So uh, firefighters annual physicals. Um, I think because this uh, exceeds the uh, 
discuss that a little bit. For the past six years, we've been doing you know, physicals through BioCare. They're a mobile company that comes directly out to your facility, provides uh, baseline physicals for all the physicals for all the employees. Um, <clears throat> Gives the employee a sense of what's working, not what's not working for their individual health. Uh, call lead, uh, call lead, uh, cardiac rhythms on them, and then do uh, pretty extensive blood work on them. Um, this is very important. It's a very stressful job. The guys are exposed to a lot of stuff on a regular basis. Uh, everybody knows it. Well, everybody here knows it. September of last year, I went for a physical and they found blockages in my heart. Oh, um, didn't know that. If I would have been a little more proactive with my physicals and stuff like that, I would have caught it a little sooner. Um, everything's fine now, I'm good to go, but that's why we do these physicals on our guys to make sure that they're conscious of their physical um, attributes. There's no issues that are underlying that uh, may have catastrophic. Just once a, I mean, I know annual means once, but once a year. Yes, sir. That's it. Okay. Yes, sir. This also gives them the clearance to continue working as a firefighter. Um, it's based on an NFPA fifteen eighty two physical, uh, NFPA's National Fire Protection Association, and it sets standards and guidelines of uh, benchmarks that firefighter or people in fire fields uh, need to maintain so that there's no hidden. All right, issues. So, somebody want to render a motion? You want a motion? I would move to approve um, payment of the annual firefighter physicals to BioCare for not to exceed $9,000. Support, Al. Supported. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, vote, please. All right, Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Frederick, yes. Flowers, yes. Mr. Howe, yes. Selby, yes. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Oh, wait. Oh, Cooper, yes. Oh, oh sorry, Cooper. Yes. We started in, I'm like, wait a minute. Rick members got to go back around, around sometimes. I would have caught it. <laughs> sorry. Keep All right. Um, the next item is uh, another fire fighter hit element. Uh, Chief, you want to introduce that one and speak loud if you can. So. Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> Over the past decade, we've been witnessed the collapse of the private EMS system. You guys have heard me whine and cry and send out emails repeatedly on it. Uh, watching trends, we were preparing for the inevitable in August of 2020. Your Highland firefighters assumed the role of primary advanced life support EMS provider for our community. With a little over a year into providing this service, we've adapted pretty well. We're not the only area fire department that has had to adapt to the void of the collapse the collapse has created. In November 2021, Springfield Township also assumed the role of EMS transport for their community. Um, this has created an opportunity for our communities to share a position, um, to create a QA, QI for EMS runs. QA stands for quality assurance, QI stands for quality improvements. Um, the way our current system works is the next day in, our firefighters review the runs from the previous day which is great, but it's not one person reviewing all the runs. So if somebody's having an issue with IV6, if somebody's having an issue with um, repeatedly missing certain protocols from the county or not following certain agendas, there's no continuity in the person evaluating these runs. So uh, we were asking we hire a Naomi Basket review and provide improvement plans if needed for staff members. Ms. Basket is currently a full-time flight medic with MedStar Life Flight. She has years of experience as a paramedic in Michigan. Both Highland and Springfield Fire Department utilize, utilize the same reporting system for EMS reports, which will make it easy for Ms. Basket to review our runs as well as Springfield's runs. Uh, she's expecting somewhere between, I think, 15 to 30 hours, depending on the run volume for that month. She's only checking the runs that are transports. Um, but she's expecting somewhere in that time period, she'll assign whatever ones take up time from, from Highland to her payroll for that month, which will be done through Image Trend. Uh, we're, we're expecting somewhere around 10 to 15 hours a month. All right. So we want to make a motion. I would move to hire 
Ms. Baska. Baxa. Baxa. As at an hourly rate of $19.67 an hour, not to exceed 30 mm -hmm. hours per month. Support, Sylvia. Move to support it. Any uh, questions? Is, is she going to come out and do that or do, remote? Everything's remote. She won't be in the station at all. She's not going to fill a role of a firefighter. All she is is just an administrative person to ensure that we're doing everything we need to provide the best service to the community for EMS. So and then she just sends a report? If she has, if she's finding issues or finding um, repeat offenders, she'll contact our EMS director, which is Captain George. They'll sit down, and evaluate a plan to improve the system and go from there. How will you monitor her time spent? I'm sorry? How will you monitor her time spent being remote? Uh, it'll just be based on her inputs. I'll look at her inputs, review how many uh, EMS transports we have found on our system of controlling hours. Yep. Chief, yes, I just have a quick question. Um, the monitoring system, is that um, standard among most communities? I mean, do they have a set guideline that she'll you know, follow as far as what she's monitoring and what the standards are and how far the standards are being deviated from, if any? Yes, so this, we follow first office state guidelines for EMS activities, and then we also have Oakland County uh, Medical Control Authority that we re report back to and we're accountable for um, runs. They tell us, you know, how often we have to take, uh, uh, I'm sorry, take vital signs. They, they tell us what qualifies for IVs, what qual you know, should they have had a blood sugar check. So all the things are set up in the uh, protocols, both state and both, uh, county level protocols. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> all right, uh, any other discussion? If not, we'll uh, vote please. All right, let's see, where were we? It's your turn? Okay. Mr. Oh. Frederick, yes. <laughs> okay. Flowers, yes. Uh, Mr. Howe, yes. Salvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Lewis, yes. Pamela, yes. All right, motion carries. <clears throat> Okay, next item is uh, resolution 22-02 feed schedule for 2022. Um, we probably should have had a comparative uh, schedule put in there together, but uh, we didn't catch the uh, that. Uh, the, so there's some items in here that did go up from the previous year, but they're very marginal. And there's only a few of them that literally three or four things that uh, increased in cost. And they were done based on an analysis of other communities and what they were charging. An example being electrical, um, for electrical inspection. Uh, there's a slight increase in that, but nothing that's, that's uh, significant. Usually you would do the uh, consumer price index and you would do that on the whole fee schedule, but we didn't do that. Because, uh, okay. Ones that seem to be a little bit out of alignment uh, we realized it. So, and if you, there's, it's quite a list of uh, <laughs> fees. I mean, uh, it's paid some. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> but it is how we uh, cover the cost. So, yeah, it's housekeeping. We do this every year, right? Yep, every year. Well, we'd like to make a motion to approve. I would move to approve the fee schedule as presented for 2022. Support, Lewis. Sorry, okay. resolution 2202. All right, move and support it. Uh, roll, please. All right. Um, I'm first, so Flowers votes yes. Mr. Howell votes yes. Salvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Lewis, yes. Frederick, yes. Hamill, yes. All right, motion first. Is that Kevin Garrity? Okay. And pride of no pride. Right. Kevin? Ken, you want to do the. Uh, yeah, it's just a gentleman that uh, yeah. we're going to do your way to you finish your last thing before you get the journal. Okay, sounds good. Let's, I All right, the next question. item is um, quick, Rick. I have huh? a quick question. Yes. And um, Jenny, do you know what the CPI is for 2022? We didn't even, I don't know that we looked it up. Karen might have. Okay. It was, I'm a, I just thought it would be high. So yeah, that's what we got. In between two and four, probably. Okay. I'll see if I can find it. Um, thanks. Maybe not. I should have called you today. Sorry. The way that everything else has been jacked up, I'm I, sure that's I know. affected. So, 
All right, so uh, the next item is um, um, some ARP money funding for Rhoda um, assistance. Um, when we did the, when the board did the, um, approve the, uh, uh, our contribution to uh, Rhoda, there was a two year uh, fee schedule where we, we all, the, the three main communities, paid 185,000 a year. And then in the fourth, third and fourth years, there was supposed to be a formulary that would be used to calculate how the communities would then have to pay for additional um, funding to, uh, for the program. And what happened is, is there was no historical numbers to use in the first year. And we really needed to get the second year in there. And so um, when the uh, numbers came out for what we were supposed to uh, be paying it. Uh, the board kind of, the WOTA board kind of stood up and went, whoa, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, to give you an example, um, Highland, we, we would have increased by just about $256. But White Lake and Waterford, especially, Waterford would have gone from 185000 to over 400000 And it was pretty clear that it was, Difficult enough to get the, the boards to, I mean, 185 from what we were doing before, the significant increase is kind of one of those things. So what we did is we, uh, and then Wald Lake, um, their commitment is a millage. And that millage is static, so we can't really do anything about that. And uh, when we discussed uh, any kind of an increase, um, they said if there's an increase, then they would have to bail. So you don't want the program to die and uh, we need to make sure that we can uh, promote it. But what we're doing is we're re, uh, um, rediscussing the budget. We did approve a budget and it's based on um, some basic numbers that, that we uh, were hoping our board could come through with. So Highlands, uh, the recommendation for Highland was an additional 25,000, which would bring us to a total of 210,000 for our commitment. And so we were, the, my proposal was to use our funding for that um, additional monies. Uh, we did, uh, you know, if you looked in your packet, you did see that the attorney made a comment. Um, our auditors, Tammy called the auditors, auditors said that they didn't see that it would be a problem. Um, there was other evidence that said that transportation uh, would be an application, but the other components of it are that the township um, is giving the money to a nonprofit. So th that's an open uh, capability too. It's, there's so much that everybody has to learn on what, what this ARP is gonna do, but um, I don't think there's gonna be a, a problem with it, but for 25,000, if it becomes a problem, we have to repay it, it's still worth it for the program to move forward. But uh, I do want everybody to know that we're gonna be analyzing the program um, a lot differently moving forward so that we can kind of keep things in line so that it doesn't uh, outgrow itself budget-wise and turn it into a, a disaster. So, and, uh, so that's my request. And, and because I'm, uh, I move on the board. Oh, I, to I'm going to have to recuse myself from the decision making on this. So we have to vote on this. this yes. First, right? So you. I move motion, motion to motion to allow, allow Rick Hamill to supervisor to recuse abstain abstain from voting. Voting because he is on the WODA board. Support Cooper. Okay, so we can all vote. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and vote on that. It's me, and then. Yeah. Mr. Howe votes yes. Salvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Lutz, yes. Frederick, yes. Lars, yes. Hamill, yes. Yep. You can't vote. vote. No, I can vote on the abstention. Oh, Andre, abstain. I can't abstain. vote on the, uh, on the other part. So we'll need a motion to uh, for the. Uh, I move to approve using. <laughs> $25,000 ARP funding for WODA transportation assistance. Support how? We'll move to the support. Uh, vote. 
Sure. Just make a little comment. Oh. So, I mean, I'm fine with this for this year. I think, you know, you're using one time money to supplement an operations budget, which is not a sustainable plan long term. So, we had a discussion today. Yes, I know you said, well, Kim's going to have to go after more grants or something, but I, I just, you know, it's a concern. I think at this level we can be okay, but you know, long term something's got to be figured out. Agree. And when this started, um, we talked. We talked about they would go after the um, what is it, the regional transportation, the RTA. Yeah. So. Did we vote on that. No. 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 Okay. Well, I just want to make sure because We're I can't come back right? and play on this until after you vote, but then I'll have something like to say. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and uh, do this. Yeah, I'd like to hear where, where the RTA plans are right now. If if you know that, I don't. Because that was always part of the plan from the get go. Was hopefully if we built this program that we would be part of that if, it, right. if and when it was ever approved. So I'm not aware of where the RTA is. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Well, I can't discuss. So. I know. We're not talking to you. <laughs> we have shunned you. <laughs> All right. Ready to vote? All right. Joe. Uh, Mr. Salvia. <laughs> Salvia, yes. Cooper, yes. Lewis, yes. Frederick, yes. Flowers, yes. Sir, I'll vote yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will uh, make some comments on this. I, I think it's something that uh, needs to be kind of cleared up. Back when we were uh, went to become an authority, mm -hmm. um, we were told by um, individuals from MDOT that we would have a direct avenue toward to the uh, federal funding through the Regional Transit Authority. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the uh, new employees of MDOT that, that had made the recommendations did not know the the law, and it turns out that Southeast Michigan through SEMCOG has been deemed a particular entity that is, uh, doesn't allow us to, to go through mm -hmm. directly to the federal funding to the RTA. We still are forced to go through SMART. Yeah. So it's not that it's a, I mean, even uh, NOTA has to do the same thing and they've sure. been at it for, for 15, 20 years now. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it isn't a, a process that can head in the right direction, but what we have to do is we've got to really start paying attention to, um, and I say we, meaning the, the WOTA um, program, how do we get to be a piece of that without being set aside? You know, you want to, the reality was how can we form a, a program that maybe the RTA and, and which kind of they give smart their money too. So, but what happens is <clears throat> the RTA has a pie. Now there's a WOTA and they're taking a piece of the pie. And there's also a whole bunch of other people and they're taking parts of the pie. So that part that we're taking now reduces some of the other people's uh, pieces. So we have to, we're gonna have to learn how do we fit in maintain it wedge, grow it, or become a part of the bigger, the whole pie where the operations come down from uh, the RTA or federal funding. So it's it's a very complex um, process, really complex. And uh, there are grants, and this is, this is to speak to, to Tammy's uh, concerns, which are my concerns as well, and Jenny's sure. and everybody else's here, I'm sure that, what we don't want to be have happen is have us be sucked into the vacuum of the buses driving by and saying, you know, as the money's blowing out the tailpipe, we have to pay it. Right. We have to watch that, you know, it's the thing that um, way back when we first started, we we had a program and it was paid for out of grants only. Right. But it was highly constricted. Well, ironically, we're still going to be highly constricted. So we have to be very careful not to um, jump out of the, the envelope and, and make it some assumptions that uh, uh, are going to get us in trouble. So um, that's 
where we're at right now. So it's a learning curve and uh, we've got some serious stuff to do in 2022 to, to make it work. So, Quick count, count. Is it just a typo on F? Because it says ARP. <clears throat> it's our American Recovery Program. Program, yeah. Okay, because then somebody said RPA. I just got confused. Oh, we're talking about RTA. RTA, Regional, Regional Transit, Transit Authority. Authority. And, I, and I, I should explain that because a lot of people don't understand <laughs> that the Regional Transit Authority was a group that was put together for the distribution of federal monies for transportation. Um, SEMCOG is a piece of the planning pie that works with the Regional Transit Authority and the Regional Transit Authority is for Southeast Michigan uh, counties, Wayne, Washtenaw, Macomb and Oakland. And so then through the state level of funding, which gets their money, MDOT gets their money from the feds, um, they are involved in uh, you may be listening, have heard uh, Governor Whitmer talk about uh, rural transportation, how they're trying to come up with programs for rural transportation. Well, you would think that Highland's more rural than any of them. We don't qualify because we're, uh, we've are we been established as an urban community by SEMCOT. So uh, we're not changing. It's not going to happen. And uh, um, I think the one fortunate thing that has happened is the, uh, one of our new leaders at SEMCOG is Chris Barnett, who's uh, um, um, Orion Township Supervisor. He's a real, uh, really a good person to, to work with, and I have a very good rela working relationship with him, so it's kind of nice to have that. Uh, as, and so goes with Rick Kowal and uh, Gary Wall from um, uh, Waterford, you know, we all are a, a group together as uh, township supervisors, and so it's we're, we all got to work on it. Okay. And, uh, but we <laughs> we certainly can't just throw it out there and think that you know that explains it. For you, know, you can't pay for it by fares, so it's got to be paid for by. Uh, I have another question. Yeah. So, so chief, uh, sorry, just to just to clarify, so the RTA is funded by the counties but no. that's the county portion because my question was is there any discussion of the county supporting this in any way well the interesting part is is that uh, we were actually um, brought up at the regional transit authorities um, <clears throat> one of their uh, meetings last fall and one of the things they said is that uh, WODA needs to be considered a part of the whole process so we're not you know, sitting outside the fence, wondering what's going to happen with it. So we'll have an avenue to be able to be a, a piece of that. But we're going to have to work very close with the RTA. And I think <clears throat> that I really we want to try and mold. And we've had this conversation directly with them already. Stop thinking about top-down funding. Stop thinking about five mills and look at the bottom end up and go, what's it really take to fund these things and what can you really operate at? So that you're working at a level where the resources can be spent better on a local level than to try and build these grandiose projects or programs which suck the blood out of it. So the real operating millage is maybe one and a quarter mills and the rest of it is all bled off in planning and you know, blueprints and, you know, yeah. trains and stuff like that that are right. really not part of, should not be part of the this process. Yep. Okay. All right. So Good. hopefully that uh, adds a little bit of knowledge yeah. to it. So as we move along, I'll All get right. more tuned into it and uh, pass some more information on. But it's going to take some, uh, some serious uh, head banging, I think, uh, and part of it to make it happen. But we do have, uh, I do have, inroads with all of the people involved in it. So um, I have their phone numbers and have had multiple conversations with them. All right. And we, we just got to keep it uh, in a positive light moving forward. So time for the chief. All right, that's uh, that's it. Thanks for the, uh, Thank you the assistance on that. Uh, that will help. There's a lot of people. It's really been a, a, an asset to the communities. And um, ironically, uh, Yes, we are somewhat funding some of Waterford's um, 
transportation, but the reality is, is they stepped up and helped us form this thing, you know, to, to, to make it develop. So, and it wouldn't have happened without it. Their program would have actually halted. And so it's a matter of, uh, you know, just looking at it and going, okay, here's our budget, here's what we have to do, here's how we have to redesign it to fit within the budget. And then uh, when you get, and this, this addresses Tammy's thing, is that you don't want to be using one-time revenue sources. They need to be revenue sources that have consistency to it. Now, there are grants that have consistency. You get it one year, you get it the next and the next and the next um, until the federal government just yanks the chain on everybody. But uh, um, the one-time grants or payments like us throwing some money at at the program um, should not be considered part of the budget. So in that form, Chief. yeah. All right, Chief. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Sorry, Kevin. Come on up here. <clears throat> you missed your 15 seconds of theme earlier. Come on up the center here. If you watch this way, this way, and then face that face that you're looking at, that really handsome guy. Tammy's going to come up and swear you in. Or the, the, I'm sorry, the clerk's going to come up and swear you in. Smile. Are you going to introduce him? Uh, this is Tyler Martin, uh, badge number 224. Actually, the two of you guys come on up here too, just standing behind him. Yeah, that's good. Let me say a couple things after you guys are done. I'm sure you're sequential. I promise not to be up here for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you're all smart. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Tyler, you raise your right hand. The other two gentlemen already did this. I do solemnly swear or affirm. I do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully perform. I will faithfully perform. The duties of firefighter. The duties of firefighter. In and for the Township of Highland. In and for the Township of Highland. County of Oakland and State of Michigan. County of Oakland and State of Michigan. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. All right, well, okay, congratulations on your ear helmet. Don't move. <clears throat> I do just want to say a couple things about these three guys. Um, you heard me mention earlier that our run by them was 750 runs last year. That's a 20% increase over the previous year. Um, most communities are experiencing the same thing. But last year we were running with just two guys a lot of the time on, on duty. Uh, not say you get a car accident, we have to provide EMS. You got to have a fire truck out there because that's where all of our education equipment's at. <clears throat> it's not a cop, no, I should say it's not a cop. Occasionally, uh, over the past few years, we've had to leave a fire engine out on a scene because the ambulance is transporting to the hospital. Even before we took over EMS, there wasn't a private ambulance available. Our guys had to transport. We only had two guys on duty. Engine stuck, stuck out on the uh, scene for hour, 45 minutes, whatever it took to get staff over there to pick it up. This group of kids, and I say kids because they're kids, have stepped up. It, the joke around the station is the kids are always here. The kids are always here. They were always being involved. They were helping wash trucks. Not getting paid, not doing anything, but just hanging out around the station learning from the staff, being involved with the staff, being part of the team. Um, it's been a pleasure to see these guys develop. Uh, it's been a pleasure to see how our FTO program, field training officer for new hires, each one of them has an FTO assigned to them, how that program has evolved to develop just amazing candidates, amazing candidates. These, these kids are, are just great and we couldn't have done it over the past year with all the runs, the 20% increase without them. So thank you so much. So I guess what this really means is, is they graduated from fire kids to fire men. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you. All right. On that note, um, we're going to be at Duke's during the day. I'm going to show. <laughs> okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you.